Man, this is freaking sweet. This reminds me of the time Tobup talked about the Family Guy video game. All right. Sure, I don't know what that guy was talking about, but alright. The Animated Adult Comedy, a medium of animation beloved and despised by all. There's been hundreds of these things at this point. Good, bad, horrific, life-changing. Of course you've got the classics like Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead, and the new contenders like Rick and Morty and Bob's Burgers. However, most important out of all of these, you've got the awkward middle child. Starting all the way back in 1999, the home of Glenn Quagmire, none other than Family Guy. Family Guy was an adult animated sitcom centered around the wacky antics of the Griffin family, which, I mean, if you're watching this video, I think you already know that. Family Guy was an immediate smash hit. Well, it was an immediate smash hit after it was an immediate gigantic flop. After being canceled with the end of the third season, reruns were eventually shown on Adult Swim, and that along with DVD sales brought the show back for a fourth season. And 17 seasons later, I just can't escape its presence. Honestly, I'd consider my a fan of the show. I mean, if you see my videos before, you know I've always got my iced out Brian Griffin necklace on. Speaking of my necklace, did you know that there was a time where Family Guy merch was way more accessible than it is today? It was the greatest era in human history, that time in the 2000s when Family Guy merchandise was in stores. Action figures, dartboards, quagmire flavored energy drink, everything's been done. So, you know my dumbass is about to mention video games. When it comes to Family Guy video games, there's actually quite a few to talk about. Yeah, the pinball games both the physical and digital ones and also you're able to buy the figure from the machine on ebay which is just wonderful there's the mobile games like family guy another freaking mobile game which is a clone of candy crush and family guy the quest for stuff a clone of that one spongebob mobile game which i'm pretty sure that was also a clone of something oh and of course we have to mention family guy online the greatest piece of lost media to ever exist However, I haven't mentioned the first ever released Family Guy video game, Family Guy Video Game. Family Guy Video Game, banger title, was released in 2006 and published by 2K Games and developed by High Voltage Software, the company known for the 50 cent PSP game. Now, this isn't the only full-on console game that they've done before. There's the sorta sequel Back to the Multiverse, which I've actually heard isn't too bad, but that's a review for another day. I mean, surely a game this expensive has to be good, right? Oh wait, never mind. I actually took a look at this game a couple years back, but back then, I didn't finish the entire game, and also, I hadn't watched Family Guy beforehand. I didn't like it back then, but will my newfound love for the series make this game really good, or will this game kill the love I have for the series faster than a speeding Prius can kill an alcoholic talking dog? Ryan, look out! Dancing, walking, rearranging furniture. The menu was fairly standard. New game, continue, settings, release neurotoxins, the essentials for a video game menu. The story begins with our funny man Peter Griffin watching the TV show Mr. Belvedere, while Stewie is playing another one of his world domination attempts by grabbing the satellite Peter's using. While trying to grab it, he's stopped by Bertram, which, for those non-diehard Family Guy fans, is basically evil Stewie. Well, I mean, Stewie's already evil, but he's like other evil Stewie. Anyways, he tricks Stewie into destroying the satellite and then runs away. This also causes the satellite to fall on Peter and knock him out. It's up to Stewie to follow Peter to the hospital and enter in his gonads because I guess that's where Bertram's lair is at. Also, at some point, Peter wakes up in the hospital and decides just to kill Mr. Belvedere because why not? While all this is going on, Brian gets a visit at the house by the dog Seabreeze, who once again, if you're lame and don't follow the family guy lore, she's a dog owned by Peter's father-in-law who almost had kids with Brian one time, which actually plays into the plot here because the police arrest Brian thinking he broke the restraining order and got Seabreeze pregnant. Once again, go watch that episode. This is where all of the character stories begin, and they're all divided into three major sections of gameplay. Speaking of which... There are three different types of gameplay here, playing as Peter, Brian, and Stewie. Each of them covers a different genre. First off, you start playing as Stewie, whose levels are like a shooter kind of platformer hybrid. You control Stewie, which your main goal is to pretty much just kill everybody in your path and get to the end of the level. You can accomplish this with your ray gun, which is just a basic blaster, but over time, you can actually upgrade it by grabbing these little yellow bolts on the ground. Start off with the basic shots, but then you get triple shots, grenades, shockwaves, homing missiles, and more. These are optional for the most part. I mean, you can avoid the bolts and use the basic gun, but trust me, you do not want to do that. 
You also have three other gizmos at your disposal. A grapple hook, which, you know, lets you grapple onto things. A balloon glider, which lets you glide. And a mind control device, which lets you control minds. The balloon glider is useful for platforming, and the grapple hook works like the Lego games, where it's only in certain positions, but still useful. But the mind control is sort of forced into the gameplay. It's only used a few times to solve a couple puzzles, and that's about it. You can't just choose to use it whenever, which I get that, but it still would have been cool if you could. For the entire game, there's not a difficulty setting, but the levels are a good variety of both super easy and cheap as f The majority of enemies you come across are either just basic melee or projectile enemies, nothing too fancy. Every now and then you'll have this Galaga style boss fight where you have to fight waves of enemies. The first few are easy, but then there's ones like the lowest horde that multiply when you kill them, or the final horde where there's landmines everywhere that get faster as you go forward. I'm sure these aren't too difficult with all the health packs lying around, but I kinda suck at video games so my dumbass kind of died a few times. Also, there's a couple levels that operate like a big slip and slide, and they're kind of annoying as hell to control, but they're inoffensive, I guess. Overall, I like the Stewie levels. They weren't too long. They have some decently fun gameplay, and the part where you stomp on the pregnant ladies was interesting. Next up is Brian, and his levels are stealth-based, which, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of stealth games. <laughs> The only Metal Gear game I've ever played is Rising, and FNAF Security Breach makes me sad. I've never really been a huge stealth fan, and these levels didn't really change my mind. Thankfully, compared to the 8 Stewie and Peter levels you have to play, there was only about 6 Brian levels, but that didn't make them any less boring. Your job is to sneak around various locations, pick up collectibles like VHS tapes or tickets, and not get caught by anyone. And I mean anyone. Cops, random citizens, dogs, Jesus Christ, a man who has already died. Anyone and everyone is out to get you for some reason. It's a very basic formula. You hide behind objects and in the shadows to remain hidden. You can pick up disguises to roam around freely, such as lampshades or a banana suit, and just don't get seen or touched by anyone and you'll be fine, it, probably. Also, this isn't like some other stealth games where you can run or fight back if you get caught. If you're seen or touched, it's back to the last checkpoint, which for some of these these levels can be really annoying like this one level where there's like seven dressing rooms in a row you have to get through and if you die in the very last one it's all the way back to the beginning you stupid bitch sometimes you have this bone meter in the top left which fills up quickly over time when it fills you're drawn to whatever is causing it to rise for brian like a fire hydrant or alcohol or an innocent pedestrian it doesn't get more complicated than this sometimes you gotta distract a character by interacting with an item sometimes you gotta play music sometimes you got a poison dogs, but that's really about it. I don't think these levels were the worst thing I've ever played, but it was kind of a drag to get through some of these, and I don't think I'd ever do it again. I'd rather sneak into restricted places myself. Lastly, you've got the TikTok legend himself, Peter Griffin. His levels are beat-em-ups, which actually I'm a big fan of. Will this be up there with classics like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Streets of Rage? <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. The Peter levels function like your basic beat-em-ups. Punch and kick your way through waves of enemies to progress through the level. There's items to throw, health kits to pick up, and there's also a special move meter that you can fill up by eating various foods. In the earlier levels, you can get by by just using the punches and kicks respectively, but towards the end, you kinda have to use the snack meter because it's all that can do any damage. There's also a charge that can use up your meter, but I mean big whoop, I could do the Wario shoulder charge through crowds of single moms too, you know. The enemies are straightforward. There's random people who you can either punch or kick, there's children who you can only kick, and then there's the tougher enemies who either need to be thrown after knocking them down, or you need to use the special attack. There's also these bosses who could take a million hits and you need to complete a quick time event to defeat. It's not too difficult, but there's no invincibility frames or anything after being hit, so it's really, really easy to get ganged up on and just die instantly. It could get a bit frustrating at points. Honestly, these levels can get kind of boring. It's more the references to older episodes and locations that are the interesting parts. Like at different points, Peter is hit in the head and turns into different characters. Like, uh, okay, moving on. In the middle of all the levels in the games, sometimes you could get hit with the cutaway gag, which are basically these mini games to get power ups like invisibility for Brian or more snacks for Peter. I think it's actually a very creative way to implement cutaway gags into the game. Good job, Family Guy video game team. Speaking of good jobs, the humor throughout the game isn't horrible. I mean, if you like Family Guy, you'll like this game. I mean, the game had the same writers as the show, so I'm not too surprised. Also, hearing Brian say click while wearing a lampshade was f 
fucking killing me for some reason. Now that we've gone through all the levels, I bet you're just dying to know how the story ends, right? This is emergency services. I'm gonna have to ask you to hang up. Let's start with Brian. For Brian's story, he ends up escaping the police station. He then gathers videotapes at the news station because he thinks Tom Tucker is the real father of Seabreeze's puppies. He's wrong, so he just decides to go to the racetrack instead and try to smell out the father. But then he realizes he can draw out the father by posing as Seabreeze and winning the race. So he drugs and kills the other dogs and then wins the race himself, only to reveal then that the father all along was none other than Glenn Quagmire. And for for some reason, nobody has a problem with Quagmire f***ing a dog. What a hilarious ending. For Stewie, he finally infiltrates Peter's balls and fights against Bertram, only to be kicked out after Peter, uh, I, I don't know, he just kind of gets rid of him. After that, Stewie just discovers that there's a normal above ground layer, and he also infiltrates that one too. After lots and lots of wacky zany obstacles, he finds Bertram, who has kidnapped his teddy bear Rupert and strapped into a rocket. You still following with me here? Stewie immediately saves him and challenges Bertram to a duel on the playground. This is where the second to last boss fight occurs where Stewie fights Bertram and then a giant Bertram. After you successfully defeat the boss a few times, Stewie is about to kill him and he calls for his mommy, a tactic old as time itself. And lastly, we've got the end to Peter's story. After following many false leads to kill Mr. Belvedere and save his family, oh yeah, he thought his family was kidnapped, I guess, he ends up at a fishing dock where he finds out the whole thing was fake and he basically raptured half the town for nothing. However, this isn't where all of the stories end, as all of them lead to the final boss and last level of the game. If you know Family Guy, you saw this coming from a mile away. The chicken fight. Basically, you just beat the ever-loving shit out of the chicken until you go through enough scene changes to end the game. The game ends with Peter finally beating the chicken, and the game just kind of stops there. There's no cool credit sequence, no resolution, the chicken just does the thing where he comes back to life, and we get some Family Guy font credits. I hope my obituary plays out like that. And that was the very first Family Guy video game. As a fan of Family Guy, honestly, I kind of appreciated it. But as a fan of video games, I, I feel like I should be calling emergency services. Hello? You know what, let's start positive. Once again, if you like Family Guy, mostly the older episodes, I feel like some of these jokes can get a kick out of you, especially the cutaway gags. Damn! This is even more intense than that time I forgot how to sit my ass down! The levels are very unique. There's a lot of stuff here for fans of the show, like little easter eggs, and the Stewie levels were fun at times. Uh, I like the variety in his weapon upgrades, and actually gave me incentive to collect the bolts. Uh, the cell shading is nice. You've got Carter. Alright, it's time to complain about the Family Guy video game. First of all, it's repetitive as hell, especially the Peter portions. At least with Stewie's levels, you get different types of enemy attacks and gimmicks, and there might be a puzzle every now and then, but Peter's levels are just bad. Bad. The combos you could do are useless, especially because you have to focus on what the enemy is immune to, which honestly also doesn't matter half the time, because some of these enemies just won't die without a special attack. Also, the gameplay itself can go from boring mindless button mashing to frustrating situations where you feel like you can't get through unless you just get lucky. Now Brian's levels! Okay, I mean they're fine I guess, but they're also just boring. Just watch the patterns of the enemies and move, not much else to it. The bone mechanic is dumb because it can go up way too fast, and also it's really the only major mechanic they add to make it unique. Also, I don't know if there was just an issue on my end, but the game was pretty buggy. Could've just been me, but I choose to blame Family Guy for all of my issues. Overall, if you either A, really like Family Guy, or B, want to kill some time with a stupid ass video game, I I'd recommend it. It's not the worst thing I've ever played, but you also stomp on pregnant women and shoot quagmire babies out of them, so make of that what you will. Boy, was that an experience. This was worse than the time that I met Adam Sandler. So, um...